We, we ask you a lot about Jawan Johnson, but is there anything in particular he has done between September and December that has, has earned more trust or earned a different kind of throw or a different kind of look from you? I mean, I think that he just – the way he goes about and his, like, routine each week and the way he's been performing – on Sundays, I mean, that gives you confidence in a guy. Um, so I think that's one of those things where, for him, he's had opportunities to make some some big plays for us, and and he's he's made them. And so I think that there's a, a trust factor there uh, with with him. And then the same thing with Rashid Shahid. Is there is there a new route or a new recognition or like any anything he's added to his arsenal that's really made a noticeable difference? Yeah, I mean, I think just the more opportunity that he's gotten, and uh, you know, he's been out there, and now he's starting for us and, and playing a ton. And um, I mean, there's a lot that he can do, and I mean, he's he's been showing showing up for sure. Is he a guy that can run every route, or is he more like vertical? Like, do you see him kind of adding another route tree and adding to those ones? No, he's not one of those guys. I mean, some you get some speed guys that you know are only downfield targets and all that kind of stuff, but he can kind of do it all. Is his level of confidence a little unusual? It lo he just looks so uh, relaxed and natural for a guy who's an undrafted rookie from a small school in year one. Yeah, I think one thing uh, that I mean about him is like I f he just has so much fun playing the game of football, you know, and I think that brings a lot of confidence. And so I think mean, that's. Uh, I have told him, like, that's one of the best things that he's doing is, like, they're just in, enjoying being out there, enjoying playing the game. And, uh, I mean, it allows him to play fast, and uh, he's been playing at a high level. And he has, I'm assuming just because you've been in the league for as long as you have, you've been in a situation like this where you have a shot to make the playoffs, but it's not completely in your control. So I guess it's kind of the key in your mind to kind of operate in this sort of late season scenario. I think at the end of the day, if we don't handle what we can control, control what we can control, all that, I mean, then it doesn't even matter. And so for us, I think the the mindset is we've got two left. Let's go win these next two games and you know, see what happens from there. Is closing out games something the team has to learn how to do throughout the season? Yeah, I think definitely I think it's, it's part of it. Um, you know, there's... Uh, one of those things, if you just kind of look at the teams with winning records and teams that are, uh, you know, considered some of the best teams in this league, they find ways to win at the end. And for us this year, we haven't been able to do it enough. And you can go back and look at four or five games and say, man, if a couple of these plays would have gone different, or if we would have done this, then, you know, our record would look a lot different than it does right now. But, I mean, that's everybody. What's the, the difference between, you know, doing those things and not? Is it kind of random or is it something where you start doing it and then it becomes part of, just part of the DNA? I think there's definitely momentum with it. I mean, you can even look at the Vikings this year. I don't know how many one-score games, and they're, what, 11-0 in these one-score games? I mean, they're finding ways to get it done. And, I mean, you can even look at their game against Indianapolis and say, all right, they were down 33 points and still found a way in the second half to come back and win. So I think there's there's definitely some momentum with with being able to finish out these games. Would you say that you guys are feeling a little bit? Like three wins in the last five is sort of the best stretch of the season. Do you guys feel that? Do you feel like a positive momentum right now? Absolutely. I think that's kind of where we're at. I mean, to have you know two wins in a row, like you said, three out of five, I mean, there's uh, things are definitely trending in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely an off-season conversation. Um, you know, f for me, you know, I feel like there's got two more games that are important, and then once the season's over, we'll we'll see how it all shakes out. You mentioned Rashid having fun playing football, but with the wins and the way things have been going, especially since the bye, are you guys having more fun? I know Cleveland probably wasn't considered fun, but are you guys having more fun in the locker room, kind of just feeling different? Yeah, I think so. And 
I think this one thing you said Cleveland wasn't fun. I think it, I, Cleveland was pretty fun. You know, when I think everybody now can say when someone asks what the coldest game they've ever played in, I think everybody's got got that one taken care of now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I definitely think we're having having fun. That fun factor, though, I'm assuming is dependent on the result. Like if you go out there and lose, it's not fun. I'm guessing, but you win in the cold, and the cold becomes fun. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Were you in the same draft class as JJ Moore? I was. Like, I mean, what would you uh, think about you know when he announced his retirement? Yeah, I mean, he's had an unbelievable career, and so he's one of those. I mean. I'm sure y'all have heard a lot of Cam and Mark talk about our draft class, um, and you know, 2011 was was a special class, and he's part of that. And just all that he's been able to do, I think there's some things too that, not just from the football side, how he was in the community and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it shows the type of person that he was and the type of player and the impact that he's really been able to make on this game. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do. I have some good ones too, so. Uh, so yeah, but hey, great player. Thinking of like Tua's current situation with the concussions, how aware are you of like injuries, especially at the quarterback position on other teams? I mean, you f follow it just like everybody else does. I mean, it's hard to see. You know, it's unfortunate for him. Um, I mean, concussions. That's a that's a tough thing to be dealing with, and especially with the the number that he's had this year. So hopefully, he can he can get healthy. Yeah, I mean, you look at the numbers. I mean, they they're you know one of the best defenses in the league in a lot of most categories. And I think for them, they they play really hard. They know the scheme that they're playing, and um, you know they've been able to create a lot of turnovers. And I feel like that's led to the success that they've had. How much do you uh, how much do you and the guys in the locker room follow news around the league, social media, things going on? And I ask that because there's been a lot of talk of I mean, it's hard to say you don't see stuff. Obviously, um, with the way the world is today, it's hard not to to, to see what's going on. But um, I mean, it's nothing that, that we're talking about.